Vladimir Putin's war has been ongoing for two years. Russian troops still control large parts of eastern Ukraine. And it looks like the fighting is far from over. In fact, Russia has only become stronger in these two years, despite the sanctions and isolation from the West. Moscow has deepened its friendship with three allies, Beijing, Pyongyang and Tehran. Putin now uses drones from Iran and missiles from North Korea to strike Ukraine. And China is in the background, providing financial support to Russia. As Russia continues on with its special operation and Putin remains in a dominating position, Europe fears that the clouds of war are upon them. Ukraine has lost more than 30,000 troops. The amount of wounded are completely unaccounted for. 31,000 Ukrainian troops have been killed in this war. 31,000 Ukrainians, which hurts us a lot. But I cannot say how many wounded we have. Because Russia will know how many people have left the battlefield. I just cannot say. Zelensky's soldiers have lost their morale. They are outgunned and outmanned by the Russian juggernaut. And now that NATO members have slowed down on delivering weapons, Ukrainian troops are on the back foot and retreating. The number used to be entirely different. To cut a long story short, my warehouse was full of munitions. There were hundreds. Now what we have left is about 20%, and deliveries are much less frequent than before. I do not know what's going to happen if they stop munition deliveries. I honestly do not know. I cannot even believe it could happen. With Ukraine unable to stop Russia, NATO has begun going on the offensive, taking the security alliance closer to war with Putin. France says it is concerned about how the war has tilted in favor of Russia. And Macron says he is not opposed to sending his troops to the battlefield, which would mean a direct war between Russia and NATO. Everything was discussed in a free and direct manner tonight. There was no consensus today to send troops onto the ground in any manner that's official, assumed and endorsed. But on the dynamic, nothing should be excluded. We will do everything so that Russia cannot win this war. The message is clear. Putin must be defeated at all costs. NATO is worried that there may come a time when Russia's war in Ukraine will expand. And to fight against Putin's behemoth, Europe will need weapons and manpower. If NATO keeps sending its weapons stockpile to Ukraine, they will have very limited resources to fight a larger war. As Putin grows stronger, NATO is worried that there may come a time when they will not be able to contain Russia. So the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is expanding. The security group is spreading and inching closer to Russia. The latest additions to NATO have been the Nordic nations. First, it was Finland last summer. Now Sweden will also join the ranks of NATO, shunning neutrality and non-alignment. Sweden is an outstanding country, but we are joining NATO to even better defend all that we are and all that we believe in. We defend our freedom, our democracy and our values together with others. Sweden is leaving behind 200 years of neutrality and military non-alignment. It's a big step and something to take seriously. But it's also a very natural step that we take. Membership in NATO means that we now come home to a large number of democracies' cooperation for peace and freedom, a very successful cooperation. Here's why Sweden joining NATO angers Russia. Because of Finland and Sweden, the Baltic Sea has become NATO's backyard pool. Every nation around the water body is now a NATO member, 
and sandwiched between them is the prime Russian land called Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad is now surrounded by NATO from all sides. This would not have been possible without Sweden and Finland joining the security alliance. So here's what Sweden brings to the table. Sweden has 25,000 troops in its army. The Nordic nation has over 100 tanks and 350 artillery guns. Sweden has five submarines and seven warships. They also have about 100 fighter jets, most of which are the homegrown Gripen jets. Sweden doesn't bring large numbers to NATO, but they are going to play a vital role in Europe's security, and the Nordic nation is ready for the Russian challenge. Personally, I would feel that I could absolutely carry out the obligations that come with NATO, that I myself might then end up in other countries that are also members of NATO. Sweden's membership comes at a time when NATO is flexing its muscle unlike ever before. The newest member is a shot in the arm for the now 32-member strong security group. Steadfast Defender 2024 is currently underway across Europe. This is the largest exercise that NATO has conducted since the Cold War. Here's how massive Steadfast Defender is. 90,000 NATO troops are taking part in the drills. The drills began in January and will end in May. More than 1,000 combat vehicles are taking part. At least 50 warships are patrolling the seas. Over 80 fighter jets are taking part across Europe. The drills have already been underway for over two months, from the seas to the air to the ground. NATO troops are preparing for every aspect of combat. As part of our steadfast commitment to the Alliance, transatlantic bond, and demonstrating our advanced capabilities, not only are we conducting this robust exercise, our maritime units are also working together on other fronts. Steadfast Defender, the largest NATO exercise in decades, is ongoing in the North Atlantic. As NATO prepares for the Russian threat, Putin is also preparing for the great game. Russia's military production is at an all-time high. Serial production of the new hypersonic Zircon missiles has begun. Tests of other missile complexes are being completed. Last December, new strategic submarines joined the Navy. Just a few days ago in Kazan, four Tu-160M missile carriers were transferred to the armed forces. Russian soldiers have gained valuable combat experience in Ukraine. On the other hand, NATO is stronger than ever with Sweden joining its ranks. Tensions in the European corridor are at an all-time high. Fingers are on the trigger. Russia and NATO are eyeball to eyeball. Both sides have mapped out each other's weak points. Putin has no intentions of slowing down. He feels cheated by NATO's expansion. NATO says the expansions were because of Russia's aggression. As the global voices for peace fall on deaf ears, it looks like Europe wants to start another world war.